In the very beginning of this course, we learned that JavaScript is an object-oriented programming language. But what do we mean by object-oriented programming language? In this lecture, I will give you a very general and high-level overview of object-oriented paradigm. In this lecture, you will learn what is object-oriented programming, how object-oriented programming works in general, and what are the four pillars of object-oriented programming. This lecture is going to be a complete theoretical lecture and also this lecture is very important for upcoming lectures. Now, what is an object-oriented programming? Object-oriented programming is a programming paradigm based on the concept of objects. So, what do we mean by a paradigm? Paradigm simply means how we write and organize codes in a program. In object-oriented programming, we represent real-world entities as an object, for example, a user. A user can have a name, a role, type of access, and he can also perform some tasks like adding a new user or removing an existing user. So here, we are representing a real-world user as an object. An object can have data and behavior. Now what is data? The properties of an object are called as data. And what is behavior? The methods of an object are called as its behavior. So here in this example, this name, role and access are the data for this user object. And this method add user and remove user is the behavior for this user object. So we can say that we use objects to pack all the data and behavior of real world entity all in one big block. So objects are self-contained piece or block of code and we use them as the building block of our application and makes them interact with one another. Object-oriented paradigm was developed with the goal of organizing the code in order to make it more flexible and easier to maintain. Today, this paradigm is probably the most popular and most widely used programming paradigm in large-scale software engineering. Object-oriented programming, also called as OOPS in short, is certainly not the only way of writing organized and maintainable code. In fact, there are many other paradigms like functional programming or procedural programming. However, object-oriented programming paradigm is the most popular one. Now, how does object-oriented programming works in general? We know how to create and use objects in JavaScript. However, up until now, we have basically only used objects as a loose collection of data and without making them interact with one another. For example, let's say I'm creating three objects. John, Mary and Steve. And I'm creating these three objects using object literal. This is how we have been creating objects so far. Now, if you notice these three objects, all these three objects has the same property name and same method. And the implementation of the method is also same. If we have to create 100 objects like this, then we will use this object literal 100 times and we will have to specify the same property names and same method 100 times. But in an object-oriented programming, one of the important concepts is to create a blueprint and based on that blueprint, we can create objects. For example, let's say I create a blueprint called person. So this person is one object. And based on this person object, I can create different objects. Let's say, John, Mary and Steve. So here, John, Mary and Steve are the instances of this person object because we have created this John, Mary and Steve based on this person object. So here, this person object acts as a blueprint for these objects. Also, when we create an object based on a blueprint, we can create that object using a single line of code, unlike creating object using object literal. 
in the next lecture you will learn how to create a blueprint in javascript and how to create objects based on that blueprint next what are the pillars of object oriented programming so there are four pillars of an object oriented programming and these are inheritance encapsulation abstraction and polymorphism let's understand each of them one by one inheritance is a mechanism that allows us to create new classes or new objects based on an existing object for example here you can see we have two objects this person object and this employee object now an employee will also have a name birth year and gender property and calculate age method so while creating the employee object if the programming language does not support inheritance in that case we will have to specify the name birth year gender and calculate age property explicitly for this employee object along with these properties employee id salary company and calculate salary method but with inheritance we can make an object inherit properties and methods of an existing object so in this example with inheritance we can make this employee object inherit this name birth year gender property and calculate age method from this person object in that way we won't have to explicitly specify those properties for this employee object okay so here you can see this employee object when it inherits from the person object it has its own employee id property salary property company property and calculate salary method and this name birth year gender and calculate age method it is inheriting from the person object and this is called as inheritance with inheritance we can reuse an existing code without repeating it and inheritance is the first pillar of an object oriented programming next we have encapsulation encapsulation is the process of hiding data from the outside world for example there might be some data in your object which you don't want to expose to outside world for example here this employee object has this salary property and we don't want to expose the salary of an employee to the outside world this salary should only be accessible from within the employee object okay for example this calculate salary is a method of this employee object so this calculate salary method should be able to access this salary property but outside of the employee object no other object and function should have access to this salary property okay in simple words we want to hide this salary property from the outside world and hiding a property or data from the outside world is called as encapsulation now in many object oriented programming language the encapsulation is achieved by using a keyword called as private the private keyword makes a property you know hidden from the outside world okay so encapsulation is the process of hiding data from the outside world then we have abstraction abstraction is a way of hiding the implementation detail and showing only the functionality to the user in other words it ignores the irrelevant detail and shows only the required ones for example if you are using a smartphone your smartphone will have lot of applications now when you use that application you don't care about how this application works internally how this application have been implemented internally you are only interested in using the application and this is called as abstraction in with abstraction we are hiding the implementation detail and we are showing only the functionality to the user let's take another example let's say in an organization there are two types of employees permanent employee and part time employee and these two employee objects are inheriting from a single employee okay single employee object now when an object inherit from an existing object then the inheriting object is called as child object 
and the object from which it is inheriting is called as base object okay so here this part-time employee and this permanent employee object is inheriting from this employee object so this part-time employee and permanent employee are child objects and this employee is the parent object in the parent object we specify the common properties like name and salary so both this permanent employee and part-time employee will have this name and salary property okay and the properties which is specific to the type of employee will be specified in that object for example let's say the salary structure of permanent employee and part-time employee is different for permanent employee the salary is calculated on monthly basis and for part-time employee the salary is calculated on hourly basis now in this parent employee object we are declaring a, uh, a method called get salary and here we are only declaring this method we have not implemented this method right the implementation of this method will depend on the type of employee okay so for the permanent employee we are implementing this get salary method based on monthly salary and for part-time employee we are implementing this get salary method based on number of hours the employee has worked so here we are only specifying the you know functionality and not the implementation and this is called as abstraction then lastly we have polymorphism polymorphism means different forms in object oriented programming we can write methods with same name but different implementation for example here you can see we have two methods with the same name add numbers but the first method takes only two parameters and it returns the sum of those two parameters on the other hand the second add numbers method takes three parameters and it returns the sum of three you know those three parameters so when we call this add numbers with two arguments it will call the first add numbers method and when we call the add numbers method with three arguments it will call the second add numbers method okay so same name but different forms and that's why it is called as polymorphism so this is the very basic and very high level overview of what object oriented programming is in the upcoming lectures we are going to implement these object oriented concepts in javascript this is all from this lecture thank you for listening have a great day